I actually wrote the story and produced Indiana Jones. I didn't actually direct it. It was that other guy that looks like me. Um, uh, I'll give you two things. Um, one which I've answered a few times here around the table, so I figured I'd share it with everybody, um, which is, you know, how did I end up where I am? Uh, and um, when I was in high school, I was a consummate underachiever. Uh, I hated school. Uh, I loved to build things. Uh, I loved woodworking. I loved uh, working on cars and engines. Worked in a foreign car service, and all I wanted to do was race cars. Um, right before graduation, I was in a terrible automobile accident and uh, was almost killed, and as a result of that, sort of sat in a hospital for a long time thinking about my place in the world, uh, and decided that I would give education another try, and uh, took my very bad grades to a junior college, and discovered social science, uh, the humanities, uh, became very infatuated with uh, anthropology and psychology, and suddenly found something that I really loved uh, and um, did very well. And then uh, when I graduated and I was about to go on to the last two years of college uh, at uh, San Francisco State to get a degree in anthropology, uh, my best friend who I'd grown up with since I was four years old uh, said, you know, come with me to, to, uh, to uh, Stockton. I have to take a test to get into USC and I don't want to do it alone, and come on, just take the test with me so I don't have to be there all by myself. So I said, okay. So I went up there and took the test, not thinking that I'd pass, but I did pass, and actually I got accepted at USC, and I said to my friend, uh, well, now what am I going to do? I said, I really like anthropology, and I think I want to do that. And he said, yeah, but you, you wanted to go to Art Center. You really wanted to be an artist, and you know this is your second choice, anthropology, and I did. I wanted to be an, an artist, a photographer, I'd done a lot of photography, and I wanted to be an illustrator. But my father said, there'll be no artists in this family. You know, that's a horrible way to make a living. Uh, and if you want to go and be an artist, then you're going to have to pay for it. And he knew me well enough to know that I wasn't about to do that. I will take the route of least resistance. I had sort of picked up my grades, but I was still an, a consummate underachiever. And uh, so he said, well, you know, SC, they've got a... a, a a department there of photography. I said, oh, that sounds good. He said, it's easier than PE, you'll love it. I said, well, okay, maybe I'll do that. So I went down there, and it wasn't a school of photography, it was a school of cinematography. And it wasn't actually a school of cinematography, it was actually a school of cinema, where you learn to make movies. And I said, this is insane. You mean you go to a university and you can learn how to make movies? I never heard of such a silly thing. So, uh, and I hadn't really paid much attention to the movies when I was young, I sort of watched a little bit of television and stuff went and saw Earth versus the Flying Saucers and, you know, Bridge on the River Kwai and a few things like that. But I didn't know anything about movies. Uh, and I got there my first semester. I had to take a lot of requirements, you know, Spanish, uh, science, that sort of stuff. But I got to take two classes. One was a history of movies. Um, and growing up in a very small town with one movie theater, I hadn't seen a lot of movies. And um, I, we didn't get a television until I was 10. So in those days, one of the main advantages of being in a film school is when you take a history class or something, you actually got to see movies that you couldn't see. It's an amazing thing, the world you live in today, you can actually go down to a store and just get any movie that's almost ever been made. And you can see it, and then you can actually have the filmmaker, you know, in the extra bonus disc, tell you how they made it and everything. That's basically what a film school was. Uh, except you were surrounded by a lot of kids that sort of believed the same thing you did. So I got there and I learned about movies, which I really didn't know anything about in terms of the history of movies, watching really great movies. And I had a production class, Introduction to Animation, uh, where eventually they gave me one minute film and they said, here, run the camera, you know, follow these instructions, move it to the right, move it to the left, move it up, move it down. And so I took that little assignment with my one minute of film and I made a one minute movie out of it. Uh, I took a lot of still photographs and created a collage and a, a whole different way of doing animation and put a soundtrack to it. Uh, my professor was unbelievably uh, impressed with it uh, and uh, it blew everybody away in the film department and they sent it out to festivals and it won like 47 festivals. 
And I said, wow, I know how to do this. I'm actually pretty good. Matter of fact, I'm better than anybody here. Uh, I love this. You know, this, I want to do this for the rest of my life. And so I was lucky enough to find my path, my passion. Before that, I had passions. You know, I wanted to be an artist. I wanted to build cars. I wanted to create things. Um, but, uh, and I liked anthropology. I really wanted, I was very interested in social science, very interested in why we do things, you know, where we came from, uh, all kinds of, you know, mythology. Um, and I realized after a few years, you know, and then I went to film school, made movies, and ended up being where I am. But I realized that I was following on everything I did, I was following something I really cared about, something I loved, something I was passionate about. And I kept following that passion, whether it was cars, whether it was anthropology, uh, whether it was art, um, photography. Um, and eventually it led me to my huge passion, my real passion, which was making movies, which combined all of those things. And I realized that had I gone on to get my degree in anthropology, I would have probably made anthropological movies in New Guinea or someplace and eventually been on National Geographic and you know the History Channel and uh, been then making features and I'd have done Star Wars just the same. If I'd have gone to Art Center and become an illustrator, I would have probably started doing animation and doing animated films and making animated things and then ultimately I would have gone on and been right where I was. So no matter which route I took, because I cared about all of them, they all led to the same place. Had I done what my father had wished me to do, which is to go into the office equipment business with him, which I knew I wasn't going to do, I knew I hated that, my life would have been unpleasant. And um, so I think it's very important not to do what your um, peers think you should do, not do what your parents think you should do or your teachers, but to do what you inside or even your culture thinks, but do what's inside you. You know, when I went to film school, everybody said, well, you're nuts. What are you going to film school for? You know, you're only, there's no, you, nobody from a film school had ever gotten a job in the film business. Just had never happened. So you were just doomed to be a ticket taker at Disneyland. So they was like, why would you do that? You know, why don't you take a major that you can actually get a job at? Why do them? When, but once I fell in love with it, there was no going back, even though I had absolutely no chance of making it in the film business. And I did the same thing when I um, graduated. I moved back to San Francisco. And they said, well, you can't make movies in San Francisco. You're crazy. I said, but I don't want to be in Hollywood. I don't want to do that. I don't like those kind of movies. I want to do different kind of movies. And um, they said, well, you'll fail. But it'll just never happen. And we managed to make it work in San Francisco. So that's the long story of how I got here. Uh, another short story of one thing I discovered along the way is that several speakers up here have talked about happiness. And... I've discovered along the way that happiness, you, have, you live in two worlds here. Happiness is pleasure and happiness is joy. You know, it can be either one. You add them up and it sort of falls under the uber category of happiness. Pleasure is short-lived. Uh, it lasts an hour, lasts a minute, lasts a month. Um, and it uh, peaks and then goes down. It peaks very high. But the next time you want to get that same peak, you have to do it twice as much you know, it's like drugs. You, know, just, you have to keep doing it because it insulates itself, no matter what it is, whether you're shopping, uh, whether you're uh, you know, engaged in any other kind of pleasure. Uh, that all has the same quality about it. On the other hand is joy, and joy is the thing that doesn't go as high as pleasure in terms of your emotional reaction, but it stays with you. Joy uh, is something you can recall. Pleasure, you can't. Uh, so the secret is that even though it's not as intense as the pleasure, the joy will last you a lot longer. Um, and people who get the pleasure, they keep saying, well, if I can just get richer and get more cars, you know, I can, I'll never, you'll never relive the moment you got your first car. That's it. That's the highest peak. Yes, you can get three Ferraris and a new uh, uh, Gulfstream jet, and maybe you'll get close. But you have to keep going. And eventually you run out. I mean, you just can't do it. It doesn't work. So if you're trying to sustain that level of peak pleasure, you're doomed. It's a very American idea, but it just can't happen. You just let it go. Peak 
great. Pleasure is fun. It's great. But you can't keep it going forever. Just accept the fact that it's here and it's gone. And maybe again it'll come back and you'll get to do it again. Joy lasts forever. Pleasure is purely self-centered. It's all about your pleasure. It's about you. It's, about, it's a selfish, self-centered emotion that's created by a self-centered motive of greed. Joy is compassion. Joy is giving yourself to somebody else or something else. And it's a kind of thing that is, in its subtlety and lowness, much more powerful than pleasure. If you get hung up on pleasure, you're doomed. If you pursue joy, you will find everlasting happiness. So with that, I'm gone. (laughs) Bye-bye. Thank you.